Whenever I wear my beanies like this, like flipped up, I always think I look like Harry from Home Alone. So today's video is very exciting. I've done plenty of videos in the past talking about top 10 horror movies on every streaming platform, pretty much. I've done one for Netflix, Hulu, Shudder, Tubi. So you can all check, you know, those videos out if you want, even though they're a little bit dated. And I thought it was time for me to talk about the best horror streaming on all those platforms again. However, I thought we'd save a little bit of time, even though this video will be probably my longest video I've ever made. <laughs> I'm gonna do it all in one video. So today I'm going to be telling you the top five horror movies streaming on every single platform that I personally have, which is all of them except for Disney Plus, which I don't think has horror anyway. So I will of course have timestamps down below for all of the streaming platforms that I'll be covering. So if you just have Netflix or you just have Hulu or whatever, you can jump around in this video. Also, I tried to make this list really unique. So instead of of picking mainstream movies that we've all heard of. Um, I tried to pick some obscure ones. I only get five per platform and picking five only for each one was so hard. So I hope you have some, or there are some in this video that you haven't seen before. Also, if you don't have any of these streaming platforms, I still recommend all of these movies. Also, if these movies aren't available in your country on your own streaming platforms, that's okay because today's video is sponsored by NordVPN. If you're unfamiliar with the VPN, it's really useful in today's tech world. It makes hacking close to impossible. It protects your data and privacy. And of course, the best part, you can access any country's streaming services and horror selection, no matter where you live. Obviously, this will really come in handy for today's video because I'm going to be sharing the U.S. selection because I'm located in California. So if you're not located in the U.S., just get yourself NordVPN and you can access all of the U.S horror streaming selection or any country streaming selection. So if you're not happy with US's selection, you can access any other country in the world. NordVPN is so easy to use, so user-friendly. All you have to do is click on the country that you want to access and boom, it's like your computer is in that country right now. You can also use NordVPN on up to six devices with just one account. So all of your stuff is protected. They also have a 30 day money back guarantee. So there's really no risk to try it for yourself. Right now they're doing a Black Friday deal. So make sure you go to nordvpn.com slash possessed by horror and get a two year plan plus a free additional month and a huge discount. Okay, let's just jump right into it. We're starting off with Netflix. Uh, I tried to pick Netflix originals, ones that are exclusively streaming on Netflix that you can't find anywhere else because they're Netflix originals. First up, we have His House, which is a 2020 movie. This follows a couple from South Sudan who move to an English town and struggle to adapt to their new life where something evil is lurking beneath the surface. This is actually a directorial debut from Remy Weeks, who is only 33 years old, so very, very impressive. And he was the screenwriter and the director for this movie. I think His House is genuinely scary. I was very very surprised by the horror elements. I thought it sounded a little bit more on the drama side and it does have some drama elements, but the horror in it was so, so good. Also, the story is just amazing. I cannot hype this movie up enough and I had to start this whole video with his house. Next up, we have The Ritual from 2017. I know you're tired of hearing me talk about it, but I have a lot of new subscribers. You know, I get a bunch of new people all the time, so I'm gonna keep talking about it. <laughs> also, I'm not done yet. I will be doing a book versus movie uh, adaptation comparison in 2022. So look forward to that. Maybe read the book with me and then you can understand the whole video at that point. <laughs> so the ritual follows a group of friends honoring a pact to hike through the Scandinavia wilderness where an ancient evil stalks them at every turn. This is hands down one of the best movies streaming on Netflix, period. Like besides the mainstream horror, all of that nonsense, this is the one. Like this is my favorite one that is streaming on Netflix right now. But it has beautiful landscapes, great performances, amazing horror elements, and it definitely takes kind of an unexpected turn. So what's not to love? Next up, we have Cadaver from from 2020. This is a Norwegian movie set in the starving aftermath of a nuclear war and a family accepts a generous offer promised food and entertainment, but it's way more than they expected. This is a really weird movie. Not one of the best, I would say. I think I give it three stars out of five. It's, you know, very entertaining. The only reason why it's not higher is because it is a bit predictable, but it's such an easy watch. It's nothing too horrifying, I would say. It's not necessarily for beginners or family appropriate by any means, but it's it's weird. It gets weird. So next up, we have The Platform from 2019. This is another movie that I've recommended a lot. I've probably talked about it at least five times since it's come out. This is a Spanish movie that takes place in a building with vertical cells and each day a platform full
removal of food is lowered down through the cells with the ones at the top gorging themselves as the ones below starve. But I think this is a really impactful story and I'm a sucker for any type of dystopian horror and this kind of is lighter on the horror I would say, but an incredible movie nonetheless and again another great one to recommend to people who haven't seen before because I think it's a surprise for a lot of people. The last horror movie that I recommend streaming on Netflix right now is a classic horror story which is a brand new one that just came out in 2021. This is a roller coaster of a movie. This is a wild ride. I did not see one thing coming. I thought it was going to be going in a certain direction and this turned into a type of movie that I have never seen before in my life and it was so unique and original which is weird because it's called a classic horror story so you'd think it'd be a little tropey and it is but it's self-aware. So this is an Italian film and follows a group of travelers that are carpooling when they crash and wake up to realize that the road is gone and now they're just in a dense forest. No description of this though is going to do it justice. Like that is not really what it's about. That is like the first 20 minutes of this movie and anything else I go into would be spoiling it. So just go in not knowing much about this. It's so good. I do have a bunch of honorable mentions throughout this video. So it will be uh, over 40 movie recommendations with the you know, uh, honorable mentions sprinkled in there. For Netflix, I also wanna recommend Nobody Sleeps in the Woods tonight. It is a cliche kind of movie, but definitely surprised me and it was highly entertaining. Next up, we're gonna be talking about Hulu and all the best horror streaming on Hulu right now. I think Hulu has a lot of great horror options. They're one of my favorite streaming platforms to stream horror on. They have horror classics such as The Fly, Signs, um, but also more mainstream horror like Lights Out, Crawl, Parasite, which, arguably isn't horror, but it kind of leans that direction. But another thing Hulu specializes in is indie horror movies or horror movies you've never heard of. First up, we have False Positive from 2021. This is a controversial one to start out with for Hulu because not everyone's gonna like it. This one I know for a fact is not everyone's cup of tea. This follows a couple struggling to get pregnant until they soon discover a new doctor with different techniques, but there's something sinister about him. I think this is a movie from A24 that kind of went under the radar. I believe it's a Hulu exclusive, so you can only stream this on Hulu. Definitely check the trigger warnings if you are sensitive to things like birth, children, things like that. But I think Alana Glazer did a great job in the lead role of this. It's a very aesthetic type movie, very A24. A lot of atmosphere and it's not a super original storyline. You could probably anticipate what this movie is about. I mean, the ending kind of gets uh, a little bit, goes in a different direction than what you assume this movie is going to be, um, but it is kind of predictable. But it's still a really fun watch and I haven't heard a lot of people talk about it. Next up we have the movie called I'm Just Fucking With You from 2019. This is one of the movies that was in the collection of Into the Dark that Blumhouse did over the last couple years or so. This one was personally my favorite out of all of the Into the Dark ones, although arguably I did not watch all of them, like every single one, because they just kept coming. Um, the only downside with the Into the Dark series on Hulu, there's a lot to watch there. So if you're looking for a lot of content, Hulu has it with the Blumhouse series. Uh, they're very short horror. A lot of them are just over an hour. But the problem with that is I think they focused a lot on quantity versus quality. So a lot of them aren't that great. They're mostly entertaining from the ones that I've seen, but I'm just fucking with you, I think was the best one that I watched. This is about a brother and sister who have to endure pranks while staying at this motel. And to me, it's just a fun movie. It's slightly disturbing here and there, but mostly entertaining and fun. It's a little bit more lighthearted. I think all the Blumhouse Into the Dark series is pretty lighthearted, so I think that's a good place to start if you're looking for that. Next, I'm really excited to talk about Censor, which is a new movie that just came out in 2021 as well, and I'm excited because now it's officially streaming on Hulu, so you can watch it there. Again, this is a movie that I think kind of went under the radar. Not a lot of people talked about it, but I did see some people discussing it. To me, it's a standout of 2021. I really enjoyed this movie. This follows a film censor who links a disturbing horror movie she's screening with her sister's disappearance and becomes obsessed in finding the connection. So this is set in the 80s, so it has great 80s vibes and atmosphere in this if you're a fan of 80s horror. And I think it's a beautiful movie without really losing itself in the story too much. Like it's not too artistic, it's not beautiful just for the sake of making a beautiful movie. And it definitely has its flaws, like it's not a perfect movie, 
but I love it and I love to recommend it. I will say it's not super scary either or anything, so just know that. Next, we have a really unique movie called Unsane from 2018. I think I've mentioned this in the past. This is a psychological thriller that follows a woman who unknowingly signs a form for a 24-hour hold, which becomes longer as the staff at the facility question her sanity. The reason why this movie is so unique and pretty popular, I would say, at least for its filming style, is because the whole thing was filmed on an iPhone 7 Plus. Like, <laughs> I think Unsane is such an original, low-budget horror movie that everyone should see and appreciate. I know it's not going to be for everyone. It's kind of found footage-ish because it's all shot on the iPhone, so a lot of the angles are so weird, but that just adds to the discomfort that this movie makes you feel. And to me, it just adds to the horror. I really love low-budget type horror movies like this, or really no-budget type horror movies, because they have to be creative in other ways, and usually the stories are really original. Next up on Hulu, we have Possessor, which came out last year in 2020, kind of another new one. This is a sci-fi dystopian horror movie that follows an assassin who takes control over other people's bodies using brain implant technology. This movie's weird. It gets very, very strange. It's done by the son of David Cronenberg, so it kind of has that atmosphere going on and a lot of odes to his dad. Now, everyone, when they talk about Possessor, talks about the body horror in this because it is fantastic. Pretty much all of the horror elements come from body horror. I guess there are some elements in the story that makes you feel a little uncomfortable. But again, this is a really unique original horror movie that I highly, highly recommend. A lot of 80s or like an ode to 80s horror, especially 80s gore, practical effects, and things like that. Oh, that was the last one on Hulu that I recommend, but an honorable mention, like I said, we're gonna do honorable mentions for almost all of these platforms, is The Terror, the TV show, season one. I have not watched season two, so I can't speak for that. I actually have the book right here, look at that. I haven't read it. Anyway, I love this show so much. It was one of the best horror shows I've ever seen. It was so well executed. I can't wait to read the book. All right, next up, we're gonna be talking about Shudder, which is, you know, arguably, the platform for horror streaming. Of course, they specialize in a lot of classics such as Halloween, but I think what they really focus on is a lot of older horror movies, especially older movies that you have not seen before, including the first slasher ever made, A Bay of Blood, which came out in 1970. They have that on there. But they also have some really good gems that I don't think enough people are talking about. First up, we have nor, I don't know how to pronounce that. First up, we have Norai the Curse. Sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. This is a 2005 Japanese horror movie. This follows a paranormal journalist who goes missing after completing a documentary, which is the actual footage and movie that we watch. So it's a found footage movie. Absolutely love Japanese horror. I think they really know how to do it right. They do a lot of supernatural stuff, which is my favorite subgenre of horror. So I say that Norai the Curse is a little bit more on the creepy side versus like horrifying scary, if that makes sense. It's a little bit more of a slow burn, especially in the first half, but it definitely is worth the payoff in the end. Next up, we have Coherence from 2013. I think this might be streaming on other platforms as well, like Tubi and whatnot, which we'll get to. And this is another one that is a movie that I will recommend until the day I die. So I've talked about it a lot. Not sorry. This follows a group of friends at a dinner party while a comet is passing by in the sky. It kind of causes some weird time things, which the concept alone is so good. It's such a smart way to do a low budget movie, having like a space event affect us on Earth. It's just so creative, I love it. It is a trippy time bending movie, so if you're a fan of movies such as Triangle or Time Crimes, then you'll really like this one, or vice versa if you like coherence, you'll really like triangle and time crimes. <laughs> so this is a more low budget movie with minimal script. I think a lot of the actual dialogue was improv, which is so cool. And it really adds to the feeling that this dinner party and these people are real people. So highly recommend coherence. Next up, brand new horror movie, VHS 94. I do have some new ones that like literally just came out. Uh, VHS 94 is one of them. This is an anthology style horror movie with three short VHS tapes and like a main overarching story story. It just released on Shudder, so it is a Shudder exclusive. You have to watch it on there. And as I said in that video, it's, this has some of my favorite like shorts out of the whole franchise. I think it was genuinely 
horrific. But it was disturbing in the best ways. It was really good. Highly recommend. Next up, we have The Dark and the Wicked, which came out in 2020. Again, haven't really seen a lot of people talk about this. I have talked about it in the past, but we're going to talk about it again really fast. This follows a brother and sister who gather at their family's farm as their dad is slowly dying and they begin to experience nightmares and sense something evil is taking over their family. If you're in the mood for a slow burn atmosphere type horror movie, The Dark and the Wicked is the one to go with. It's so good. It's beautiful. Beautiful. It's, you know, great storytelling. I think it's great. The last movie I recommend streaming on Shudder is Ring. They actually have the full original Ring trilogy, like Ring You, and this came out in 1998. Of course, this is the original Japanese movie that inspired the American remake, which as you know, is my favorite movie of all time, so. Personally, I find the American remake scarier than the original, but that's just my personal opinion. I do like the original. I'm sure a lot of people are very curious what my thoughts are on the original trilogy. I haven't seen the whole trilogy, but I have seen the original and I don't think it's as scary or as good as the remake. I'm sorry, I'm gonna say it. Moving on to HBO Max. Uh, this is actually a good one for streaming horror. If you have it, they tend to do a lot of new releases. Like as it comes out in theaters, they'll often put it on HBO Max. So it's a great way to watch a lot of like the more modern releases, but we don't, we don't have any of that uh, going on in today video. So first up, we're going to talk about Cry Wolf, which is an early 2000s, 2005 movie. This follows a group of students at a boarding school who play a game called Cry Wolf until their game begins to come true. This is a great early 2000s teen kind of slasher movie. Not kind of, it is a teen slasher movie. It is set around Halloween time. I consider it a Halloween movie, but you can watch it any time of year, of course. If you've never seen it before, now is the time. Next, we have Event Horizon from 1997. This is a sci-fi horror movie following a crew on a mission to the Event Horizon and spacecraft that previously and mysteriously disappeared. Once aboard the vessel, they discover that something sinister is still there. I don't think there's enough space horror out there. I think we need way more if you have any recommendations for space horror, specifically taking place in space, not necessarily alien on earth kind of thing, but like space horror up in space. I think Event Horizon is like the classic, most known original horror in space type movie. So a lot of people have probably seen it. Next we have Mama, which is a 2013 movie. You have, if you've been around for a while, you might've seen this coming. It's been a while since I talked about Mama. For me, it's underrated. It was in my top 10 horror movies of all time for years. It's so good. It's not there anymore because I've seen a lot more movies and there's just better ones. So after two young girls are discovered abandoned in the woods, their uncle takes them in and soon realizes whatever was with them in the cabin has followed them home. Guillermo del Toro is a producer on Mama and I do think it has a little bit of his touch in there. Like you can recognize that he is a producer because of the way that Mama looks, which you do end up seeing too much of it. So the horror elements kind of die about halfway through this movie. But what you do get in the beginning, I think is so horrifying. Next on HBO Max, we have Ouija Origin of Evil from 2016. Now before you discredit this entire list for me, including a Ouija movie, hear me out. The original Ouija movie, I think, kind of garbage, no offense. It's just very, very cheesy and just not, not for me. Origin of Evil, however, is done by Mike Flanagan and you can tell it's done by Mike Flanagan, which is the best. I think it's severely underrated because a lot of people, I think, you know, shrug it off like, oh, it's a sequel to Ouija. It's probably gonna be even worse than Ouija if that's possible. Ouija Origin of Evil takes place in 1967 and follows a widowed mother and her two daughters who accidentally invite a sinister spirit into their home after a seance. But Mike Flanagan is so talented and he executed this one so well. So I really, really recommend it. And lastly, streaming on HBO Max is Underwater from 2020. Again, a movie I've recommended so many times, but at this point I talk about it all the time. It's so good. This is a sci-fi horror that follows a crew who dive deep into the Mariana Trench over six miles into the ocean where water crashes through the walls of their drilling station, forcing them to walk along the sea floor. Of course, this is a creature feature. They're not alone down there. Six miles under the ocean. There's going to be stuff going on down there. This is one of my favorites of it's kind of movie, like within the water genre, water horror genre, and within creature features. This is definitely, I think, one of the best. Now let's discuss Prime Video or Amazon Prime Video. Amazon Prime, you know. Not my go-to for horror movies. I do rent a lot on there usually because it 
typically is the only place that you can rent or buy things. I do own almost every season of Below Deck uh, on there, but for horror, I don't think it's the best. They do have a lot of blockbuster horror, a lot of mainstream stuff, and they do have a lot of my favorite movies uh, streaming for free on Prime or free, I guess. <laughs> like Blair Witch Project and Midsummer. So, you know, they got some good stuff going on, but it's not my favorite. First recommendation on Prime is Vivarium from 2019. This is easily the weirdest, most mind-bending movie in this entire video. So if that's what you're looking for, Vivarium's the one. This follows a couple house hunting in suburbia when they soon discover they are unable to leave the labyrinth and must learn to make a life there. This has Imogen Poots and Jesse Eisenberg in it and they're fantastic together. I actually really like when they work together. They usually create characters that are very believable and I don't know, they're just like a dynamic and a chemistry with them that I really like. And this movie is just bananas. It's bananas. Next up, we have Last Days on Mars, which is a 2013 movie this is actually a new watch for me. I just discovered this movie, so I thought I'd include it. This follows a crew on the first exploration mission to Mars, and they're anticipating their departure when one of the astronauts discovers bacteria proving life on the red planet. I wasn't sure what to expect from this. You know, it's kind of your traditional sci-fi type horror. Again, space horror but I'll take what I can get. I was pleasantly surprised by this. I knew nothing about it going in. I kind of briefly read the plot and that's about it. And I thought it was going to be an alien movie. Not really an alien movie, but I don't want to say what it is. Try to go in with little information about this because you'll just enjoy it that much more. Next up, we have The Ruins from 2008, one of my favorites streaming on any of the platforms right now. I also highly, highly recommend the book. I think the book is way better. If you think the body horror is intense in the movie, the body horror in The Ruins almost took it way too far where I had to skip some parts. I didn't, but it was amazing. Highly recommend. One of my favorite books I've read this year. I also did a video comparing the two, so if you want to watch that. This follows a group of friends vacationing in Mexico who become trapped on an archaeological dig covered in carnivorous vines. Amazing body horror. I mean, that's what you're signing up for when you watch The Ruins. I think we all know this by now. Very, very gory, um, realistic type gore. It looks great somewhat weak ending, but I do love the characters and I like the story. I think it's really unique and original, so definitely check it out. Next up on Prime is Come to Daddy from 2019. Elijah Wood stars as a privileged man-child who arrives to his estranged father's cabin where he discovers his dad has a past that is catching up with him. This is such a weird movie with one too many plot points in the third act, I want to say. It just gets to be a little bit too much, but it is so entertaining. You think you know where this movie's going. You absolutely do not. I love to see Elijah Wood in such weird, unique roles, and I love that he doesn't take on any big Hollywood movies anymore. Lastly, streaming on Prime that I recommend is Headcount from 2018. This is a low-budget movie set in Joshua Tree and follows a group of teens in the desert being tormented by a shape-shifting creature that they accidentally summoned. Again, underrated. No one talks about Headcount. I thought it was fantastic. I mean, is it the best movie on this list? No, but it's so entertaining, especially if you've been to Joshua Tree. I think that's why I'm a little bit biased because I love Joshua Tree. <laughs> I think it's really well executed for being such a low budget movie. It's a great concept. It's not super original, but I really like it. Oh my God, we still have two and a half streaming platforms left. Next up, we have the worst streaming platform of all time, Paramount Plus, but they got horror on there, so we're gonna talk about them. They specialize in the horror you've never heard of and not in the good way. They have all the Friday sequels, but not the original. They do have classics such as The Fly. The Fly is streaming everywhere. Why is that? Why is The Fly just everywhere? They do have Mother on there, which is one of the most disturbing movies I've ever seen. So if you wanna test yourself a little bit, I recommend it, I guess. It's not a rewatch for me, but you could watch that one, I guess. Also, I do want to point out they just posted a Paranormal Activity documentary on the making of the story of Paranormal Activity. So that's something I haven't watched yet, but it is on my watch list. So just thought I'd throw that out there. But let's talk about my top five horror that's streaming on there right now. First up, we have the newest Paranormal Activity, Next of Kin. This just came out. Uh, I think it's really hit or miss for a lot of people. Not everyone likes the Paranormal Activity franchise. If you found yourself not being a fan prior, you might like Next of Kin because 
because it's very different, I think, from the original franchise. It's its own unique kind of story. This follows a woman who travels to a secluded Amish community along with her documentary crew seeking answers about her mother. This is less of a single person holding a camera and like just filming some demonic activity and more like the Taking of Deborah Logan type or The Last Exorcism where you have this, you know, fake documentary crew with her. I recently talked about this and I'll talk about it again in a future video besides this one. So just be prepared. I'm going to talk about it a little bit in the end of the year because it, I really enjoyed this movie. It has its flaws for sure. I did a brief uh, review of it in my What I Watched in October video. So check that out. It obviously doesn't fit into the franchise, but as a standalone type movie, I really enjoyed this. I thought the horror in the end was so good and definitely worth watching all the way through. Next up, we have Annihilation from 2018. Paramount Plus doesn't have a lot of like great gems. So some of these are a little bit more mainstream horror. I'm sure you've seen Annihilation by now, or at least heard of it. This is another sci-fi horror that follows a group of scientists who enter Area X, which has been taking over the American coastline. Inside there are distorted landscapes and creatures. It's slim pickings on Paramount Plus, you know, you've probably seen this. I imagine. I'm trying to pick some gems, but this is one of the better movies streaming on Paramount Plus if that's all you have. I've talked about Annihilation a lot in the past. I've recommended it, I think, in many lists, so it's amazing. The horror is really good and it's, you know, gets very, very weird in the end. It's kind of psychological. It's just great. Next, we have The Hole from 2001. This is such an underrated movie and I cannot believe it's taken me this long to talk about. This is a British movie that stars Keira Knightley and Thora Birch and follows a group of friends who explore a possible bomb shelter underground in order to party. I think this has such a great story and is definitely way more than the description. Like you think you know what's happening, but there's just so much more to the story and it just makes it more like psychological horror. I love the time jump. You know, you go from the past to the future. You get to see the events in the bomb shelter play out, which is very disturbing. It's almost like a crime drama in some of the parts of the movie, which is so good. It's just very, very underrated. I think on the surface, a lot of people assume they know what it is, but I do want to say, do not read the description on Google. Like don't go Google it and then read what it says on actual Google because that will spoil it 100% for you. This is of course an early 2000s teen horror movie, which is one of my favorite, or if not my favorite subgenre of horror. But I think The Hole has to be one of the better ones out there. I don't think it's cheesy at all. I think it's very serious in tone and definitely one of the best. Next up, we have Gretel and Hansel from 2020. You probably already know what I'm gonna say about this movie. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> this of course is a twist on the classic tale of Hansel and Gretel as they stumble upon a house in the woods looking for food and shelter. There lives a witch who may have other intentions with them. This movie is in my top 10 movies of all time. So of course I see it streaming on something. I'm gonna recommend it. It's absolutely stunning. It's one of the most beautiful movies, if not the most beautiful movie I've ever seen. And I'm not always one for like super artistic type horror movies, but this one is literally perfection to me. Next up we have Overlord from 2018. This is another underrated horror movie if you ask me. This is a war zombie movie that follows a group of paratroopers that drop behind enemy walls and soon realize there's more going on in this Nazi village. I think this is a great idea for a zombie horror movie. This is fantastic. The body horror is so good. It's very disturbing. Obviously you see some experiments going on. I've suggested this movie a lot in the past though in other videos, so hopefully you've seen it by now, but if not, it's on Paramount+. Plus. Moving on to Tubi. Tubi is a completely free app, so if if you're just here for the free stuff, Tubi's for you. Now Tubi is generally free with ads. I think you can pay to get rid of the ads, but otherwise it's free. So if you are watching or streaming any of these things, expect some ad breaks here and there. I think Tubi has some of the best horror selection out there. And that's saying a lot, especially because it's a free platform. So everyone should have Tubi and access Tubi because it is phenomenal. They have such a good balance of selection, a lot of indie horror, a lot of horror movies you've never seen, a lot of horror garbage. And Tubi was actually the one that was the most difficult to select just five movies. So I have a ton of rapid fire honorable mentions at the end of talking about Tubi because there are just so many movies streaming on there. First up, you already know, you already know it's been streaming on Tubi forever. Triangle. 
This is, of course, another movie in my top 10 movies of all time, so I've talked about it so many times, but if you're new here, Triangle is just one of my favorite movies for a reason. It is a psychological horror movie that follows a group of friends who are seeking refuge after a storm capsizes their small boat. They then come across a large ship where everything is not as it seems. Again, I mentioned it when I talked about Coherence because it's another like time-bendy, weird, trippy type movie. So if you like Coherence or Time Crimes, you'll like Triangle. I can't talk about it enough and I won't stop talking about it. A lot of people know me for recommending Haunting of Molly Hartley early on in my YouTube career here on this channel. Uh, now I wanna be known for recommending Triangle and Go GM Haunted Asylum, which is also on Tubi. I cannot believe I did not put it in my top five. But Gone GM is for sure in my top five. Like that movie is so good. Again, in my top 10 movies of all time. <laughs> but let's move on with my actual top five, I guess. I just forgot about Gone GM all of a sudden, but we have Eden Lake from 2008. This is a British slasher movie that follows a couple on a romantic weekend at a lake house where they are terrorized by a group of young delinquents. This is a rough movie to get through in the sense that it's very heavy. Uh, there's a lot going on, so just be mentally prepared. This isn't an easy watch in the sense that you just throw it on and it's like casual viewing. It's going to be very intense. Maybe not a rewatch type of movie, but it's done so well and I think it's very underrated, so I had to recommend it. Next we have American Mary from 2012. This follows an aspiring surgeon Mary that is lured into a world of freakish surgeries in order to save money for her schooling. Another brutal movie. This has tons of body horror in it. It also stars Catherine Isabel, who's fantastic. I absolutely love Love her in all of her roles that she plays. Also love her as Mary in this movie. It's just amazing. Next we have Frozen from 2010. Now this movie is a very sentimental movie to me personally. Comment if you know why. This follows a group of friends who become stranded on a ski lift above the ground with no one coming for them for days. Another highly underrated horror movie I think kind of on the lower budget end and I think this is a situation and like a description of a horror movie that doesn't really make sense. Like you wouldn't think would be that realistic, but the way it's written and executed and the way the characters play it out, it does make it feel very real. Like the characters feel, feel real, their trip, the setting, everything just feels very realistic. Lastly for Tubi, before we get into honorable mentions, we have Wolf Creek from 2005. This is an amazing Australian slasher that follows a group of friends who receive help from a friendly local after their car breaks down in the outback. Now this is based on a real life serial killer, however, what I love about this movie is the restraint that it holds, like it holds back so much in a really good way. If you read about the actual story with the real serial killer, you know the horrific things that happened and this movie does not take it to those places fully. I think it's more heavily implied, but it's nothing, you know, gratuitous, which I really appreciate. So the events are just loosely inspired by what actually happened and it's not a real portrayal of the killer. You know, the names are changed and everything like that. So honorable mentions for Tubi, we have Lake Mungo, Clown, Grave Encounters, Original Martyrs is on there. Very disturbing though, be warned. A Cube, Taking of Deborah Logan, and I actually had to stop scrolling at that point because I just kept finding more and more and more horror movies that I would recommend on Tubi. So let me know if you want its own want Tubi to have its own video on my channel uh, somewhat soon so I can talk about all of the good horror streaming on there or just go look for yourself, it's free. Okay, so I desperately wanted to include an eighth streaming service. I recently got Peacock and I went to make a list of all the best horror streaming on Peacock, but I don't like their UI. I can't, I don't think I'm seeing all of their horror selection, so I'm not gonna include Peacock, but the two movies that I did see on there that I would recommend are Halloween Kills, the most recent one, it's on Peacock, and also Seven. <laughs> That's what I can recommend on there. Now, Peacock is free, however, you have to have a membership, I think, to watch a majority of their collection, so you probably have to pay for a membership to watch Halloween Kills and Seven. So that is it. Uh, I do want to point out that my partner recommended that I do a video on, you know, a tier list ranking every 
streaming platform and streaming service based on horror selection price things like that so if that's something you'd like to see please let me know in the comments down below but i hope you found a lot of new horror movies to watch that you haven't seen yet if i'm missing any or if you want to share your favorites on all of these streaming platforms please leave a comment down below i hope you enjoyed and i'll talk to you soon bye